In the world of gaming, there's a studio that has embedded itself into the hearts of gamers across the world called Rockstar Games. Producing legendary titles like Grand Theft Auto, Max Payne, Midnight Club, L.A. Noir, and Red Dead Redemption, Rockstar Games has provided hours of entertainment through their magical worlds and endearing characters to gamers young and old. Now, the studio has decided that they want to work on a new open world adventure game called Land of Heroes. And great news, Rockstar Games has contacted you and asked if you could help them build their game. The job they want you to do is not to code the items in the game, nor is it to build the environments or code the missions and quests. The job is simple. Build and code the heroes. Now, Land of Heroes has dozens of different types of heroes. Four examples of the many heroes in the game are Kryptonians, Sorcerers, Samurai, and Teleporters. While each type of hero has something a little different that separates them from every other hero, there are similar attributes, behaviors, and abilities that every hero will have regardless of what type of hero they are. An example of an attribute that every hero will have is health. An example of a behavior or ability that every hero will have is the ability to walk. Can you think of any other possible attributes or behaviors that every hero will have? Pause the video here if you would like to write them down. Now, the list that I came up with is as follows. Every hero has the attributes health and energy, as well as the abilities and behaviors of being able to walk, speak, block, swim, eat, and perform melee attacks. Now, while each hero has similar attributes, behaviors, and abilities, there are certain attributes, behaviors, and abilities specific to different heroes that separate them from other heroes. Kryptonians, for example, have the ability to fly, shoot laser beams, and see through objects with their X-ray vision. Sorcerers have the ability to cast spells and heal themselves, as well as heal other characters when they are near. Samurai have the ability to slice enemies and objects with a sword, which is a melee attack that does far more damage, as well as block attacks with their swords. And finally, teleporters have the ability to teleport, obviously, as well as phase or let attacks pass through them, which prevents damage. Now, if we had to code each hero, obviously we'd have classes for each of them, with their attributes being represented by variables and abilities represented by methods. Now, how would these classes look? Well, they would look something like this, with every class having the variables health and energy, as well as every class having the methods walk, speak, block, swim, eat, and melee attack. In addition, the hero classes would have the abilities specific to them. For example, a Kryptonian would have the methods fly, shoot laser beams, and x-ray vision. The other classes would go about doing things the same way. Each method would consist of many, many lines of code. These many lines would be repeated across all classes, making these classes unnecessarily code-heavy. In addition, a programmer would need to spend a lot of time coding each class, repeating a large number of methods. And a programmer new to the system would have to read through the classes with a large number of methods to figure out how the class works. This results in a lot of wasted time. Now, a possible solution to help solve this issue is the use of inheritance. When using inheritance, we create a superclass 
or base class that holds the variables and methods common to all heroes in a single class. In this case, we call that class heroes. Thereafter, we create subclasses or derived classes that link to the superclass and inherit the methods of the superclass. In this case, we only need to write out the methods specific to each different type of hero in the subclasses. When creating objects of the subclasses in main methods, we are able to execute both the methods of the subclass as well as the methods of the superclass. We also have access to the variables of the superclass through the subclass. Inheritance gives us the benefits of allowing a programmer to save time due to them not having to repeatedly code the same method in multiple classes. Keeping common methods in a superclass results in a less complicated system with fewer moving parts, which helps reduce errors. And finally, a programmer being introduced to the system need only read the methods common to all classes in the superclass and then read the specific methods in the subclasses, which helps reduce the time required to figure out how different classes work. This brings us to the end of a theoretical description of how inheritance works. Now, while a theoretical description is beneficial, to truly integrate the concept of inheritance in one's mind, one must work on practical exercises. This brings me to my free YouTube playlist in which we will go over the practical side of inheritance, as well as delve a little deeper into the nitty gritty detail, such as what to do when the superclass does not have a default constructor, how constructors work, the difference between the this and super keyword, and how information hiding ties in with inheritance. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.